In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the most iconic species of the entire Ice Age, which is the saber tooth, the Smilodon. Now, the saber tooth originally was called a saber tooth tiger. It's not a tiger. It's not even very closely related to tigers. Its real name is Smilodon or Smilodon fatalis, which basically means grin toothed killer. The reason why the name Sabretooth Tiger started to be perpetuated was in the early 1900s, Ice Age museums were having to compete for patrons visiting them with dinosaur museums. Dinosaurs are bigger and more impressive, and it was almost kind of like a circus era where you had to have like the P.T. Barnum's, come one, come all, come see the mighty T-Rex. So to compete, the nickname Sabretooth Tiger sounded very dramatic. Instead of like, come and see the Smilodon. No, come and see the mighty saber-toothed tiger. But the Smilodon is not a tiger. It is a cat and it is arguably the most dramatic looking cat with a gape. The only mammal with a wider gape than this that's this large um, that, that can do this is a hippo. Hippos can uh, make their jaw open up a little wider than this. So why have these enormous teeth and why have a mouth that can open this wide? The irony is these teeth are not stabbing teeth. When we look at the complete skeleton, we see that the neck muscles are very strong side to side and very weak up and down. So this cat did not just go stabbing its prey. It would bite and it would stab in and pull away. That's what the neck bones show us. Well, why would it do that? What was it hunting? If you see depictions in museums, if you see paleo artists who depict this cat, they will often show it with the jaw open this wide and stabbing into prey. If you can see right here, this is not possible. Right here, it dislocates just like that. This is as wide as it can open. It's about a 90 degree angle. That's pretty, pretty impressive. But still, those teeth get in the way. Don't believe me? Let's take a look. They can't, they can't stab me. These teeth are so big, they are in the way. But there's gotta be a reason for these teeth. Well, it turns out, as much as we would like this to be a cat that hunted woolly mammoths or a cat that hunted giant ground sloths, it didn't. Well, there's a lot of people who have tried experiments where they thought maybe he hunted bison or buffalo. And there are scientists who have done an experiment where they made a metal cast of one of these skulls, measured the bite force and put it with a, a, a mechanized system and let it bite through a buffalo that had been killed at a, at a buffalo ranch. And it couldn't do anything. It couldn't bite anywhere. The, 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 the fur was too thick. The neck was too strong. And all it could do was just pierce the side of the skin just a little bit. And the paleontologists were very disappointed. Well, there's been studies done because the Ice Age is so recent that the original bones are raw bones with DNA. All the DNA results that have come back on testing from the teeth on the saber tooth from the residue left right here have shown that 90% uh, of what they killed were camels. They killed horses, zebras, camels, llamas, all of which lived here in the United States, but about 90% of what they killed were camels. We had a wide range of camels in here. We had giant camels such as uh, Gigantocamelus and Titanotylopus that are camels that were as tall as giraffes. We also had regular sized camels uh, and we had little camels like guanacos and vicunias, which later were domesticated into llamas and alpacas. All of these have long skinny necks that are vulnerable to a cat like this. So this is a cat that would jump up, it would bite the neck of its prey and then pierce through and pull back. Now, any animal that's fighting for its life is gonna struggle. And because this is a, a, a bite and pull motion, which is different, most predators, like most cats just claw their prey and arr, 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 chomp until they stop wiggling. This was targeting the necks of camels. And so this is why the build, the structural build of the saber tooth is almost like a, like a gorilla. Their front legs are bigger. That's not normal. Usually cats have much more robust back legs to push off and, and start their leap and their initial chase of their prey. This cat has larger front legs because it's got to basically give a camel a hug and hold it down while it bites the neck and rips out the throat. Now this is gross but it's also just science. This is just what they did. Now, it's interesting knowing that these cats co-evolved with camels 
And so you're just going to ratchet up your abilities, your, and, and, and as camels got bigger, the saber tooths got bigger. The earliest uh, saber tooths we see, like Dynictus, they were tiny and they hunted tiny camels that were like the size of a dog. And they just, the camel got bigger, the saber tooth got bigger. Camel got bigger, saber tooth got bigger. All the way down to your Ice Age camels, when we check the uh, vertebrae, we see that the teeth of the saber tooth fit perfectly between and around the vertebrae of a camel. Because that was what they were built to do, is to perfectly fit and stab through those vertebrae and rip out uh, everything in the front of the throat and kill their prey. So. Even though we may view this as this powerful icon of the Ice Age, this amazing predator that we imagine somehow attacking mammoths, in truth, it was a specialized camel killer. There's a lot of reasons why all of these Ice Age animals went extinct, but really, if you become a specialist, specialists are the first to go extinct. Generalist animals are the ones that we find boring, like a cow, it's kind of boring. But if you become a specialist, we're like, oh, this is super exciting. But if you are a specialist, any change to the environment, any change to your food source, you're gone, you're extinct. So even though there were a lot of factors that led to the mass extinctions during the Ice Age, there's no question that the biggest reason why saber tooths are gone is because their food is gone. They're not built for hunting deer. They're not built for hunting buffalo. They're not built for hunting elk. They're specifically built to hunt camels. And we don't have camels running around the United States anymore. And so we don't have saber tooths. Uh, that is kind of an oversimplification of it, but the principle is true. If you're a specialist and your prey goes extinct, you are going to go extinct. We have the same thing, like think about koalas. Koalas just eat eucalyptus and nothing else. Well, if eucalyptus trees went extinct, the koalas would go extinct. Pandas only eat bamboo. If bamboo went extinct, which is not likely, but if it did, pandas would go extinct. So this is what happens is nature will branch out to fill any open area, any open opportunity. But when those opportunities change, if you are a specialist, you will go extinct. And this is arguably the most specialized cat in the history of our planet. Saber teeth like this have, to this extreme, have never been found on any other cat species. And they owe it all to their uh, ability to hunt camels. So that is the saber tooth cat. The mo arguably the most iconic and most famous, but just remember, it's not a tiger. It's a saber-toothed cat or a smilodon, and it's one of my favorite animals of the Ice Age.